In this video, we're going to be talking about how do you solve equations when there's one variable in it. So let's just take a look. Let's say the problem we want to solve is this 6x plus 10 equals 22. Now, first of all, what is this whole thing? Well, an equation is anything with an equal sign in it. If it has an equal sign in it, what that means is that anything on the left of the equal sign versus the right of the equal sign, they end up having to be the same quantity as each other. It's sort of like you were balancing scales, they have to balance each other out. So what that means is this, if you wanna add an apple to the left side of the scale, you gotta also add an apple to the right side of the scale so that it balances out. Long story short, what you wanna do for these uh, problems is you wanna get x or whatever variable you're solving for by itself on one side of the equation. Once you have that, you'll know what it's equal to. Looking at this, the x is not close to being by itself. It's got the six multiplied to it. It's got this 10 added to it. So to isolate it, let's see what we can do first. Well, this 10 over here, notice this is a separate term from it, right? The six x is a different term from this 10, which is a constant. So any term that doesn't have an x in it, let's make all those terms go to the other side. So we wanna get rid of this 10. Now, just like I said with the scales, if you want to do this one something to one side, you also got to do the same thing to the other side. So if I subtract 10 from this whole side, well then 6x plus 10 minus the 10, you'll, left, you'll be left with just a 6x. But in order to do that, I also got to do the same exact thing to the other side. So 22 minus 10 gives me 12. So this equation, to a mathematician, this equation is the exact same object as this other equation. They're basically showing that this, these two sides are balanced, and here these two sides are balanced. And so when you were to do one final step, which is to divide both sides by six, that also results in, let's see, if you divide this guy by six, and you divide this guy by six, six x divided by six is gonna give us just the x, and 12 divided by six is gonna give us just the two. So there you have it. So anytime there's something right in front of the x multiplied, you just divide it. Anytime there's something added to the x, you subtract it. Similarly, if it's subtracted, you would add, right? So you're sort of doing the opposite thing to get x by itself. You do the same thing to the other side, and that's how you do that. Let's take a look at another example, a scarier looking example, this guy. 27 equals negative 9 times that whole quantity. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. One, you might think is, you know what? I'm gonna distribute this negative nine, right? If you were to distribute this negative nine, you'd get negative nine y minus, and then nine times five. And then you could do the same thing we did, get all the constants on one side, get it all the way down to your variable times the negative nine, divided by negative nine. That's, that's one strategy to do it. If that's your instinct, that's fine. Well, let's think of a slightly better strategy for this. Whenever you have a constant, multiply to the entire side of the equation. Instead of distributing, one other technique that's possible is to you know, get rid of that constant in case the numbers are nice and divisible. That's always an option if it makes sense for that problem. That's again, you're gonna have to be smart and strategically choose when you wanna do that. So here, uh, negative nine with the 27, it's divisible, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by negative nine. So this whole thing, negative nine times something divided by negative nine, the negative nines just cancel, and I'm left with just y plus five here, right? Now on the left-hand side, 27 divided by negative nine, uh, let's see, 27 divided by nine is three, so 27 divided by negative nine is gonna be negative three. So again, this equation all the way boiled down to this, and that's a much easier thing to solve, because now the only thing happening to the y is five added to it. So if we subtract five to isolate it, we're just going to end up with y on one side. And negative three minus five will be negative eight. And that gives us our final answer. Notice it technically doesn't matter if your variable ends up on the right-hand side or the left-hand side as long as it's by itself, right? So you could easily write this as y equals negative eight. Same thing. All right, last example problem for today. Uh, this monstrous looking thing. So what do we do? Step one, panic. Step two, oh, well, let's see. 
I've got this thing, this half can distribute here, this three can distribute here. So in general, uh, one strategy is always just to distribute first. And once you have everything distributed, each term is either going to be a constant or something with an X in it. And once you have it down to that, you can just collect all the like terms, all the terms with just an X on one side, the constants on the other, and then divide as needed to get X by itself. So that's one general strategy. Let's first apply that strategy to the right-hand side, see what happens. So let's just distribute this 3. This 3 will apply to both of those things. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 5 is plus 15. And then I also have plus 13 here. All right. So uh, I could simplify this further if I wanted to, right? Because these two terms can combine. So I have 6x plus, and then 15 plus 13. You can use your calculator if you need to, uh, but basically that's going to be 28. Now here's the thing, on the left-hand side, you certainly can distribute this half, but what other, so here so far we have 1 half times the quantity x minus 10 equals this thing. Now, one other strategy though, is to get rid of this half. You can get rid of this half by multiplying both sides by 2. You can also divide both sides by a half, they're the same thing. But, so if I multiply both sides of, of this equation by 2, so multiplying this whole thing by 2 and this whole thing by 2, multiplying this thing by 2 just gets rid of the half, because 2 times a half is 1, and I'm left with just x minus 10. And here, multiplying this whole thing by 2, 2 times this 6x plus 28, I get 2 times 6 is 12, that's 12x plus, and 28 times 2, that's going to be, again, you can use your calculator if need be, but that should be 56. And again, here I just have x minus 10. All right, now this is a much easier thing to handle. And so to, uh, again, to, to solve for both sides, you can collect all the x's on one side, and all the constants on the other side. Again, doesn't matter which side is which. So here, if I subtracted 12x from both sides, then it gets rid of it on the right-hand side, and I'm left with just 56. And here, x minus 12x is negative 11x, right? So again, I subtract 12x from both sides, and I'm left with that. And now I can add 10 to both sides to get rid of that minus 10. So here I'm left with just a negative 11x equals, and 56 plus 10 is 66. Finally, I can get rid of this negative 11 by dividing both sides by negative 11. And that'll give me just x by itself. And 66 divided by negative 11 is going to give me negative 6. And that's your final answer. With all of these problems, all three of these, one strategy you can always use to check your answer is because what was the whole point of all this, right? Once you got your final answer, x equals negative 6, you can check your answer. Go back to the original equation here, this original equation. If you were to replace x with negative 6, so if you were to put a negative 6 there, see what this left-hand side equals, versus a negative 6 here, see what this right-hand side equals, they should equal each other. If they're not equal to each other, you made an algebra mistake somewhere. So, cool thing is you have a built-in way to check your answer too.